Hello again, everybody, and welcome to our updated talk on adrenal insufficiency. Now, I was going to call this hypoadrenalism just simply because the other talk is hyperadrenalism, but adrenal insufficiency is a better term, um, so I'm going with that here. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button in the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated and definitely feel free um, to subscribe to my channel. You'll get updates and uh, notifications as I put more and more videos up, which I try to do on a regular basis. All right, so uh, just an overview of the adrenal glands here, what, what they do. Uh, remember that we have two um, parts of the adrenal gland. One is the uh, cortex, the adrenal cortex, and the other is the adrenal medulla. And also remember that we have three layers of the adrenal cortex, the zona glomerulosa, where aldosterone is made, the zona fasciculata, which is where cortisol is made, and the zona reticularis, which is where the sex hormones are made. Now, we're going to talk about two different kinds, although we're going to primarily be focusing on uh, Addison's and Waterhouse-Friedrichsen, which are both primary hypoadrenalisms. In other words, what that means is that the adrenal glands, there's a problem with the adrenal glands, all right? Now, if it were secondary, then what that's telling us is that there's a problem somewhere else, and because of that, the adrenal glands can't work the way they should. The adrenal glands themselves are healthy, but they're not being kicked in the butt enough to get their job done, all right? So that's the difference between primary and secondary. And then there's virilizing hypoadrenalism, and virilizing hypoadrenalism would be something like congenital adrenal hyperplasia, particularly 21-alpha-hydroxylase deficiency. All right, so uh, Addison's disease is an idiopathic, generally autoimmune disease of the adrenals, and we know it tends to be autoimmune because we see it in polyglandular syndromes in which multiple glands um, are affected, and so it's uh, you see these kind of syndromes. Um, so it is a disease of the adrenals. The adrenal glands are attacked. You can almost think of it kind of like type one diabetes of the adrenals, whereas you know type one diabetes obviously affects the pancreas. Similar. Um, so there are a number of causes. It's usually idiopathic. However, you can get infiltrative pathologies. So hemochromatosis and miliary TB can induce an Addison's like disease. An Addisonian crisis is often how it presents. Um, so this is an acute adrenal insufficiency in a patient with Addison's disease. What happens is that these patients already have low levels of cortisol. They hit a stressor in which you're supposed to have increased cortisol. Let's say you get a surgery or even, you know, if you stub your toe or something like that. Uh, what's supposed to happen is your cortisol level is supposed to go up to help um, just maintain your bodily processes. Uh, if In these patients, they'll hit a stressor, and that will induce an Addisonian crisis. Um, so for this reason, when we have people who are on high levels of prednisone or um, any kind of glucocorticoid, uh, if they're dependent on that and they're supposed to go in for surgery, then we need to increase their dose. All right. So uh, as I mentioned, this tends to be very insidious. Um, they'll have progressive weakness and fatigue. That's nonspecific. Salt craving is common. Why? Because these patients waste salt because they're unable to reabsorb as much as they should. Orthostatic hypotension, weight loss, increased skin pigmentation. Why is that? Because the precursor for ACTH, which is going to be in high amounts because they're trying to stimulate their dead adrenal glands, uh, is also a precursor for POMC and alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone. So anytime you're making more ACTH, provided it's coming from the pituitary, uh, you're going to increase pigmentation. A physical exam, they might be hypotensive. You might appreciate increased skin pigmentation. Um, there may be some evidence of dehydration. These patients are going to lose some water because remember that aldosterone is responsible for helping you reabsorb uh, salt and water. These patients will be hyponatremic. However, they tend to be euvolemic. 
they may have hyperkalemia because the uh, aldosterone is responsible for kicking out a little bit of potassium out of the body. Uh, for diagnosis, uh, we generally do this cosyntropin stimulation test. What we expect with giving cosyntropin is it's going to increase your amount of cortisol and aldosterone. Uh, so this is kind of the opposite of the dexamethasone suppression test. So cosyntropin, what it is, is just an ACTH analog. So we're basically just giving ACTH to the patient and seeing whether or not their uh, adrenal glands are responding to it. These are just sort of your general symptoms. Uh, notice vitiligo and hyperpigmentation. So this may even, they may even look like they have vitiligo. All right, uh, so this you can see here, hyperpigmentation of the tongue, of the lips, and of the palmar creases. So that's where you see this pigmentation the most, mucous membranes, palmar creases. So this is basically just going back to what we talked about. You give the cosyntropin, we expect the cortisol levels to increase. If they do not increase, then what we know we're dealing with is a diseased adrenal gland. So you may have Addison's or you may have Waterhouse Friedrichsen. Um, now, that said, why are we not measuring aldosterone? We don't need to because a dead adrenal gland is a dead adrenal gland. You're not going to be making cortisol either. So we can just measure cortisol. Now, if you do have a response, then you know that the adrenal glands are working. They're just not being told to work the way that they should. So what you're dealing with then is a secondary adrenal insufficiency. What you want to do then is get levels of your various pituitary hormones like growth hormone, FSH, LH, and so forth, and also get an MRI. Uh, the MRI, if it's abnormal, uh, will indicate the presence of apoplexy or infiltration. If only the ACTH level is low, then you have an isolated ACTH deficiency, which is relatively rare. If all levels, uh, or multiple levels at least, are low, uh, then what you may be dealing with is Sheehan syndrome, particularly if she's postpartum, pituitary apoplexy, or pituitary infiltration. Uh, now, the management for Addison's disease is primarily preventative. Um, the goal is to just keep them from going into that Addisonian crisis. We need to replace their missing hormones. So we give them cortisol and aldosterone, but that's not the name of the medications. So cortisol, obviously a glucocorticoid. What we give for that is prednisone. If they're in the hospital, you can give solumedrol, methylprednisolone, and IV form. Um, prednisone is enough for you to know. Uh, to replace mineralocorticoids, we give fludrocortisone, so that kind of mimics aldosterone. Although there are other uh, there are other drugs that have both glucocorticoid and mineralocorticoid activity, uh, but we typically give these two. These patients need to wear a medical alert bracelet. Why? Well, if they get wheeled in and they need surgery, or let's say they had a heart attack or something, they're unable to give their history. Um, if the doctor doesn't know they have Addison's, they will not get the steroids they need and they can go into crisis. So it's very important for them to wear their bracelet. If you're taking step three, that should be something that you order. Uh, patients should also be advised to double or triple their dosage of prednisone if they become ill. So if, even if they get something like a, a flu or a common cold, they should increase their prednisone dose. Uh, or if they're under stressful or painful situations, um, ideally they should be under the direction of an endocrinologist, uh, but it's just important for you to know that there are adjustments that will need to be made for the prednisone uh, if they are in any kind of uh, different medical state. These are just the bracelets. They come in a variety of forms. They used to think, or at least they still think, uh, that JFK had Addison's. He was a very sick man, and I don't mean sick in the head. I mean he was a very physically ill man. Um, and uh, he had this, you know, dark pigmented skin. I mean, relatively dark. Consider the guy is Irish, so we would expect, you know, a pasty face bloke. But he indeed had this dark skin and he had medical problems. And um, so a lot of people think that maybe he had Addison's. We don't know. Waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome is like an acute version of Addison's. Now, the cause of this is generally due to a meningococcal infection, like disseminated uh, meningococcal infection. But there are other bacteria, uh, bacterial infections that can cause this. Either way, they need to have bacteremia. And typically, this is going to be very um, 
uh, very dramatic in presentation. Uh, the principal manifestation is shock. So usually what happens here is you have a patient who's ill, they've been ill, maybe they got a picture of meningitis or maybe pneumonia or something like that. They come in, they're septic, they're ill looking, they're ashen. You give them fluids, you give them pressors, and they're just not responding to it the way they should. And so what we then think is there's a possibility of waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome. The next thing that we do is we, we give uh, corticosteroids. Uh, so what might you see on labs? Well, you're going to see a mixed picture of uh, a hypoadrenalism, of adrenal insufficiency, and signs of an infection because that tends to be the genesis of this. So you can see low blood pressure, temperature instability. That can be due to the uh, adrenal insufficiency and it can also be due to sepsis. Uh, you should definitely see leukocytosis and thrombocytopenia due to the widespread inflammation. Uh, the BMP will give you some hints. So hyponatremia and hyperkalemia do not happen in a run-of-the-mill infection. Hypoglycemia may be seen as well just due to the role that cortisol plays in that. And the D-dimer would be elevated. So those are all some hints that you're not only dealing with sepsis, but you may have an adrenal insufficiency uh, teaming along with that. Some labs that you can get, ACTH, cortisol, renin, aldosterone, those will all give you hints. The treatment for Waterhouse Friedrichsen is to correct all the de derangements as needed, make sure you're giving antibiotics because these patients are usually septic, and then give hydrocortisone replacement. So remember that our initial step is to stabilize them. We give fluid, we give pressors, we tend to the infection, uh, but the underlying cause here is adrenal insufficiency, so that needs to be remembered. All right, so to recap, adrenal insufficiency may involve deficiency of cortisol, aldosterone, or both, and it tends to be both. The best initial test when you suspect adrenal insufficiency is the cosentropin stimulation test. Remember, cosentropin is just ACTH. A failure to raise the cortisol indicates that it's the adrenal glands that are the problem. If uh, the cortisol uh, is normal, then uh, you will have a uh, secondary insufficiency. And in that case, you should check ACTH and other pituitary hormones. You're looking for something happening with the pituitary. There are two causes uh, that most commonly come up on your exam, Addison's disease and waterhouse Friedrichsen syndrome. We already talked about those. And remember that when you've got a patient with adrenal insufficiency, you need to replace both. You need to replace both glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids. Now, if it's an emergency, if they're in Addisonian crisis or something, the number one thing we need to give is the corticosteroid, the, the, uh, the hydrocortisone or uh, methylprednisolone or something like that. Fludrocortisone or the mineral corticoids, that's important, but it's not as high as an acuity as the glucocorticoids, okay? So that's important for you to know. <laughs>